Thank you, Anna. So Adnan embarrassed me a little bit because he said, in 2012, just three years ago, he was graduating college. Same story for me. Uh, I was graduating college, and he mentioned being in his bedroom. Um, and three years later, I'm still in my bedroom. But the difference is now it's by choice, so it's kind of a good thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Jason Fenske, uh, I created this channel called Engineering Explained, as John has introduced very kindly. Um, and I want to say thank you to Car Throttle for bringing me out to this um, and letting me talk at this. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is how I grew an audience of 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, I'm just one person. I do everything myself. And so, and I'm also going to get into nine ways to make the mega bucks on YouTube. That sounds a little bit more exciting than the first title. So, um, so there's a saying that history is written by the victors, and part of that is because you know they kill the enemy. But I think the other part of that is that they're the only ones that care. So I'm not going to talk much about my history. I don't think it's that exciting. Uh, but we're going to get into why you should listen, um, if I have any credibility whatsoever, and then the nine ways to make the mega bucks on YouTube, which I don't really make, but it sounds cool, so that's the thing we're going for. Um, so why should you listen? So this is just a little bit of trash talking at the start. Um, so these are you know, the, the main guys who work at Car Throttle here, uh, the ones who publish content. There's me on the left, um, and these are our subscribers on Car Throttle, so the people that follow us on Car Throttle. And so these guys all work there, uh, and lonely me all by myself, not working for Car Throttle, except I do write for them, um, but you know, not directly. I'm beating everyone except that man over there, Alex. He's a talented guy, so he's got me beat. But uh, that's my one claim that you know, this is why you should listen. Uh, also, we've got some stats. So this is from VidStats X. Um, it's a website that compiles YouTube channels and ranks them. Uh, and it doesn't include everyone automotive, but nonetheless, uh, I made it on this list, and I sound cool on this list because it keeps me within the top 25 uh, automotive channels. So there's Car Throttle up at number eight. Um, I've got some friends on here, Eric the Car Guy at number 10, uh, Saab Kyle at number nine. Um, one of the cool things about this chart that you'll notice is that uh, BMW and Audi is on here somewhere. There's Audi. Those are the only two car companies, uh, manufacturers on this list. So everyone else is below. So me as one person, and this isn't you know, to brag or anything, but me as one person uh, with literally no budget, more people are following me uh, than any other car company except for BMW and Audi. And for Car Throttle, they have the impressive thing of stating that literally more people follow them on YouTube than any car company out there. So that's pretty exciting to say. Um, so anyways, moving on. These are the things that you really want to hear about, the nine ways to bring in the mega bucks. So the first thing I want to talk about is content. Um, you'll often hear the term, you know, content is king. Uh, and the thing that I like to say is that people are lazy. Uh, I'm very lazy, and I believe uh, deeply that all of you in here are also lazy. And so this is what has brought on my success. And so part of this is that I need to be able to shorten a message. And so in anything in life, if you can create something that someone wants to do, but you know, they don't totally want to do. So entertainment doesn't necessarily fall into this category, but education very much so does. People want to learn how to speak another language, but they don't want to spend four years doing it. Um, I can't offer that service, but for learning about how cars work, that's what I've created. So the whole goal of my channel is that I spend the time, uh, the obnoxious amount of time it takes to get accurate information and learn about how something works, I boil it down into a five or 10 minute video, and suddenly you don't have to spend all that time digging through all these different sources which are all saying different things, some of which are true, some of which are untrue. Um, and so my goal is that I, I boil all of this down into a simple consumable package. Uh, and so for people who don't know anything about cars and how they work, I have this uh, playlist of playlists. And so if you start at the beginning and you watch all of the videos through the end, which would maybe take you know, several days if you were to just binge watch it, uh, you would have all of the knowledge that I've ever learned about cars because literally this is just kind of my, uh, you know, journal that I put everything I learn on uh, into a video format of what I've learned. So uh, another thing is continuous improvement and this is kind of sarcastic. Um, that's my first video uh, there on the left uh, and this is one of my more recent videos. 
And so some of the steps that I've made over the past four and a half years that I've been doing this, um, I turned the lights on, which was a big <laughs> step of improvement. Um, I also s decided to stand up rather than sit. Uh, I cropped, you know, I cropped my head out of the first video. It was pretty poor planning on my part. Um, and, and the video quality was terrible. So I've made minor changes, but you can see the formula is very similar, and yet it's still relevant, and yet there's 400,000 people following this. So it's very basic. Uh, and my biggest point was this, is that you know, it can be done on any budget. You can bring in people on any budget. Um, the two important things that I've found from a production standpoint, lighting and sound. If your lighting is off and your sound is poor, as it was in that scenario, uh, people aren't that thrilled about it. So I did eventually over many years decide to uh, put money in one area that needed it. Uh, so my third piece of advice, and it's not really good advice, but it's to quit your job. And so there's a graph here, and these are monthly views. And so here we're looking at when I started back in June of 2011, and these are monthly views. Um, and around October 2014, I was at about three quarters of a million views. So this is when I quit my job, right here. Um, and then, you know, so I was a test engineer for a forklift company. Um, and, and I was uh, designing this, uh, not designing, testing um, this uh, hybrid forklift. And so not much of my time was devoted to YouTube. Well, then I quit my job, uh, mainly because Mobile One called me and they asked me uh, if I wanted to drive a Corvette on a track. I didn't have vacation time left, so I had to make a decision. And it sounded really awesome, so I went with it. Uh, but you can see if you devote all of your time to something, uh, good things happen. Also, to Car Throttle's credit, this is when I started writing for them. So it could be just that Car Throttle gave me all of this benefit. Um, so thank you, Car Throttle. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Collaboration is huge, as Anand was talking about. Um, and so here are my views just from Car Throttle. Uh, I write for them monthly, so I do three articles a month for them. And these are uh, video views on YouTube from my referencing my articles. So in my articles, I'll include a video, uh, things like that, and it'll bring over traffic to my channel. And so here you can see the benefit of doing that. Over the past six months, it's probably been about you know, half to a million uh, views just from Car Throttle alone. So it's pretty crucial, and it brings over subscribers. Subscribers watch more content, whether or not they're watching it on Car Throttle directly. Uh, sharing is caring. Um, and so here, what, it, what I'm showing here is that this is when I published it for my channel. So my subscribers get a notification hey, uh, Engineering Explained released a video on wheel spacers and whether or not they're a good or bad idea. Car Throttle then later shared that link. Car Memes then shared that link. Uh, and then someone else picked it up eventually and shared it as well. And so you can see these spikes in views uh, as you, you know, have different pages sharing the content. So it's important to work with others. Um, if I were to just work it myself, you can imagine how this graph would just kind of be depressing and you know, fizzle out to zero. Um, so it's definitely important to collaborate, and Car Throttle was a great company to do this with. I've also started, I now share uh, all of my videos on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. It's about 600,000 plus people who follow on Facebook. And I've also started sharing exclusively my videos on Facebook, direct links to Car Throttle. I have my own blog. It's called HowDoesACarWork.com. It's a useless website, and Car Throttle is ranked really well. So what I've found out is that through sharing on uh, a car throttle link rather than sharing my own link, the links do much better on Facebook. So another way that uh, they've helped me out and it's sending traffic to them as well. So it's a very beneficial relationship. Um, here, what I'm showing is the power of a video collaboration. So I did a video with a very small channel. Uh, at the time, this guy was only at about maybe 2,000 subscribers. Uh, this was a year ago. And the humble mechanic, a uh, guy named Charles, he's a Volkswagen technician. He works at a dealership um, and has a ton of knowledge about Volkswagen. So I wanted to do a video on a Volkswagen engine. So I paired up with him. And this is his channel stats. So before you can see, he pretty much gains somewhere in like zero to 10 subscribers a day. And then we released a video together uh, that I published on my channel on VR6 engines. And so you can see a huge spike in his subscribers, and then you've got continual growth beyond that. So it never levels off back to zero again. It continues to grow as that video continues to get views. Uh, so it can be extremely beneficial, especially for smaller channels starting out. Um, if you have you know, a certain area of expertise that you can offer to a bigger channel and you can work together, it's a huge way to just bring in a massive audience. Um, so he, he nearly doubled his subscribers in a matter of like a week uh, doing this. So it was very beneficial. And I got a great video out of it. So I mean, we, we both won. 
Uh, number five is building trust. And so no one's going to listen to me uh, if everything that I have to say uh, isn't factual because it's an educational channel. And that's not a matter of getting your information from a factual source. Uh, in my opinion, it's a matter of pre presenting this information in a way that you prove it or you bring it down to a universal truth. So I can tell you guys uh, that turbochargers increase the horsepower of an engine if you were to add it to an engine. And that's just a statement, and you have no way of verifying that. But if I tell you, well, a turbocharger is a way of increasing power because a turbocharger is an air pump and it's going to force more air into that engine. If you have more air in the engine, you can burn more fuel. If you burn more fuel, you make more power. And suddenly it starts to click, and you don't have to verify, hey, is that actually true? Because you can work through the logic and see that it's true. So that's the philosophy that I like to take with my channel. Um, and then my example for that is I'm trying in this presentation uh, to teach you how to grow an audience. And in doing so, I want to make points and I want to make sure that they're factual. So I'm showing you the data that says, hey, if you collaborate with a bigger channel, look, great things happen. So that's my point with that. Uh, number six is to make jokes. It's, it's very beneficial if you have a sense of humor. I'm not always that great at it, but occasionally I'll put an effort into it. So I got a minivan in. Uh, and none of you probably want to watch a minivan review. Um, I don't either. And so I thought to myself, well, if I just post the minivan review, no one really wants to watch it. I might as well put some humor into it. So I made jokes for the first half of the video. Um, you know, typical cliche uh, minivan jokes or, or my own uh, math that proves that soccer moms are the ones that buy minivans and how many kids live in the United States with some voodoo math. And the point is, this is what we're looking at, this graph, is audience retention. So when it's above this line, I'm doing well. When it's below this line, I'm doing less than average. So what you're looking at is when people stopped watching the video. And right here at this moment is when I got into my actual review. This is just me babbling nonsense about minivans and how they're silly. And then it gets to here and I'm like, okay, so let's talk about this van. And everyone's like, all right, yeah, we don't care about vans. Uh, so my point with this is people will watch anything if you can put some humor into it. Um, and people actually really enjoyed this review. So it did well. Uh, Kia was excited that their video had humor in it. And you know I was excited that someone watched at least half of it. Uh, number seven I'm talking about is just, uh, there's going to be a lot of criticism out there. People say ridiculous things. These are actually comments uh, from my channel. These are some of the nicer ones. Uh, the first one, if you change your haircut, I will subscribe. Like, flip your front hair up or something. And that's like, you're watching a video on how a turbocharger works and you're thinking to yourself like, you know, I would watch more of this guy's videos, but the hair is just a little off. So uh, you have gray Trump hair. So I'm from the United States. Embarrassingly enough, I have to express that I am uh, not as, well, I'm associated with Donald Trump only because we live in the same country and that's uh, as far as it goes. But anyways, you have gray Trump hair, but the figure of a high school straight out of driver's ed. I don't really know what that figure is, but um, I'm okay with it. Uh, this guy looks like a fetus with the hair of a 2,000-year-old man. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous the kind of feedback you get. So uh, you're going to get ridiculous comments. You have to be able to take that. But more so than that, uh, you're going to get a lot of constructive criticism that's actually helpful. So it's definitely worth listening to what people are posting. As one person doing everything for my channel, uh, I get a lot of feedback of things that I don't know about. And someone will say, hey, why don't you do this? And it's like, OK, yeah, that's a great idea. And so listening to your subscribers is definitely a way to learn. Um, when I started out, that's all I did is I'd pretty much just take whatever people suggested for me to make, and I'd make a video on it. Uh, everyone loves a list. And so that's why uh, Adnan's uh, presentation had a bit of a list to it. This has a list in it. And probably the next ones might have lists in it, if you're lucky. Because we all have this uh, inner suspense. I think not only is it digestible, but you get to number six or number seven of an eight or nine uh, post list, and you just can't help but wonder what those last few are. And so it's, it's a great way of presenting something. So I went to SEMA this year, and I picked out 10 car parts that I thought were cool. I didn't think this video was good at all. Um, but I was like, you know what? I, I want to point out 10 things that I thought were interesting. And it has uh, probably my best audience retention, as you can see, uh, it starts off, you know, normal, 
And then once people start watching, they just can't click away. They have to watch the whole thing. So 83% of the people that clicked on this video made it to the end, uh, which is actually a really strong number. And I'm proud of the number, but I'm not really proud that this was the video that did it. But part of the reason is, is that it was a list. People love lists. Uh, and now into uh, making the mega bucks part of it, you have to have an audience. But once you gain an audience, you can bring in sponsored videos. Uh, so these are just three examples. Um, how adaptive cruise control works, uh, I did with Honda. Uh, there's a Formula Drift video on Von Gittin Jr.'s car. And then I did a video about uh, struts. And the thing about sponsored videos that you really need to take into consideration is that we come kind of from this generation where everyone's willing to call you out immediately. So if you look like a sellout the second the video starts, like they're done, they're unsubscribing, and they're not watching your videos anymore. Like it's, it's very simple to ruin your relationship with your subscribers with sponsored videos. So you have to stay very true to your original style. So what I always do with sponsored videos is I have two claims. Uh, this is an educational channel, so it has to be educational, and it's also an automotive channel, so it has to be automotive. If it's not automotive and it's not educational, it's not going to happen. So you have to kind of stick to that, otherwise you're just going to get barraged by uh, your followers and they're going to leave. Uh, and so these have all done well um, relative to what the goals were set, and they, they've been received very well. That's the important part. People aren't mad that I got paid to make a video. Um, they're happy about it and they learn from it, so everyone wins. And so the question that everyone always asks about YouTube whenever they say, hey, what do you do? And it's like, oh, I make YouTube videos. And it's like, that's a ridiculous way to make a living. Um, so the question is always, how is it actually possible to live off of that? And it is. I've been doing it for the past year. Um, and so the way it's done, it's very simple. It's done through Google AdSense. Uh, they put up ads all over YouTube. I'm sure you've seen them. And if you click on them, uh, someone gets a quarter split between them and Google. It's not always a quarter. You know, it could be less than a quarter, more than a quarter. Uh, but point is, uh, Google takes 45%, which for someone like me, who I work by myself, uh, that's a phenomenal deal for me because they do a ton of work in the background that I don't even have to think about. YouTube is always running. It's always promoting it to other people. They're building an audience for me. And I'm just kind of sitting there in my bedroom with a whiteboard doodling. Uh, and yet somehow I make a living off of it. So it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, a typical rate, there is no exact rate. Uh, and YouTube gets angry if you tell them, if you tell people how much you make. Uh, but it's not uncommon to, in my pocket, get one to two dollars for every thousand views. Uh, that I receive on YouTube. And that number jumps really high if you have a really popular topic uh, or the like car insurance. Nobody wants to watch a video about car insurance, but if there's any of you who are in the this journalism world of car insurance, like the word is worth so much money on the internet. The two words car insurance, extremely valuable. So like Subaru might be worth uh, more than a, a Honda ad or something like that, um, depending on the name. And so that's uh, extremely critical as far as how much you make. And then, uh, so I've got some graphs here, and they don't make any sense, and that's intentional. But basically, I boiled it down. So in 2015, uh, it makes it look like I made $10. Luckily, I made more than $10, uh, but that's how I made the graph look, so that it was uh, obscured, and, and you wouldn't understand how much I actually made, because YouTube didn't want me to tell you. But if you look at last year, YouTube revenue from ads alone, I'm at about $3, versus this year, I'm at about $6. So I've doubled ad revenue just from YouTube views, and then here's sponsored content. And there's other methods uh, that I create income with this channel, uh, but regardless, here's sponsored content made about maybe 60 cents last year versus about $4 this year. Um, so I've more than tripled last year's revenue, which is great for me because I quit, and uh, you know I don't have, America doesn't offer us health insurance, so we have to pay for it ourselves, things like that. Uh, so I'm on my own, I gotta figure out the world, and it's nice to have a, a cushion to fall on. Uh, things are finally, you know, working my way. So that is it. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, sure. Do you ever find yourself struggling for things to, to do videos about? I mean, how do you come up with new ideas? Is that just a case of you being curious about a specific parts of an engine? Yeah, so the question is about uh, how do I come up with these video ideas and, and do I run out of ideas? Uh, when you get to the point where there's a substantial following, it's just kind of like this constant, hey, make a video on this. And you can kind of pick and choose from those what you think may be popular. Uh, there's different tools out there to analyze, like uh, Google AdWords to analyze what is a popular subject. 
Um, most of it for me, I don't, I don't put excessive thought into it. It's whatever I find interesting, uh, and then I create the video on it. So it's not the best method. I think the best method would be to use Google AdWords. Uh, pretend that you're an advertiser and you want to advertise something. Go in there and use their keyword planner and say like, uh, you know, BMW i8 and type in BMW i8. And if it says a ton of people are advertising this word, then you're thinking, okay, that's great for me to make a video on. If there's not many people advertising that word and the word value isn't very high, it's like it's not going to be worth your time. So um, how do you see the channel in 2016? Are you still going to be doing these wide ball reviews or are you going to kind of open up for like other opportunities like car reviews or live talks or anything else? Yeah, so how is this going to grow in 2016? That's a fantastic question. Um, I. I like the whiteboard style not because it's the greatest way to teach, but it's the easiest way for me to do it as one person. Um, animations would be incredible to get into, and I have been in uh, talks with different networks as far as you know, working together to bring over animations to get this uh, in a more presentable fashion. Um, car reviews is definitely something I've been growing, so I do car reviews. Uh, every Wednesday I do a video on how something works. Every Sunday I do a car review, so I get in press cars every week, um, and I'll review a car every Sunday. Uh, and I hope to get into some cooler cars uh, than minivans uh, in 2016. Yeah, we've got one there. Uh, have you explored distribution on other platforms besides YouTube? Yeah, so I use Facebook uh, pretty extensively. There's about 650,000 or so that follow on that. Um, the thing is, I am, as uh, this one channel, generating nearly all of my revenue through YouTube. So it's either a sponsored content on YouTube or ad revenue through YouTube. So for me, I like to draw traffic to YouTube. Um, Facebook has been useful, Instagram has been useful, Twitter has been completely useless for me. Um, but I don't, yeah, so I do use whatever I find to be useful. Uh, Twitter, everything is just automated for me because it, it just hasn't resonated well. I think you had a question? Uh, first of all, I would just say that I love your hair. <laughs> Thank you. There's a touch of gray. Thank you. Uh, can you give us some advice on um, how, um, how you would look for collaborations in the future? Is there any approach to you know, how do you get ready? Yeah, I mean, you, you just want to be genuine with people. No one, no, OK, I get all kinds of emails of saying, hey, like, will you uh, share my content on your Facebook page? And that's, that's the whole, it's like, no, like, done. Like, it doesn't matter. You want to be genuine with people. You want to look into what they do. You want to understand what they do. Uh, and then you want to send them a message, you know, appreciative of what they do. So when I was very small, I had about maybe 1,000 or 2,000 subscribers. I reached out to one of those top channels that I showed earlier, Sob Kyle, and he was at 50,000 at the time. And I said, hey, like, you make awesome videos on these cars. I'm kind of breaking into this world. I'm creating content on how cars work. Is there any way we could work together? And you know, you gotta, you gotta be complimentary of people. You have to appreciate what they've done, where they've come from, and the knowledge that they have. And so in doing that, uh, he was very receptive. He was like, yeah, and he was willing to talk with me about it. He ended up posting my channel on his page uh, as a featured channel, and it grew tremendously because of that. So I think you just need to be genuine uh, in, in your approach, and, and you can get into collaborations. I think just the typical way of shooting out a message and saying, hey, can we work together? Uh, it's, it's not gonna work. And maybe it will work with some people, but for me, it's just like, you're not, you're not putting in any effort into this. You're just wanting something for nothing. And so to make it genuine, uh, to look into their content and appreciate where they are and what they've done. So um, Facebook is rolling out video monetization for premium content creators like you. Would that make you put more emphasis on Facebook video, or you would stick to YouTube on the long run? I didn't even know this, so All right. this is big news for me. Yeah, I'd be open to it if it was paid. Uh, currently, what I do is for sponsored videos, I'll share them on both because someone's paying for that video. I'm not going to advertise over it uh, because it's sponsored. That's kind of how YouTube works. And so for me, it's in my best interest to share it on both platforms because they get the most bang for their buck. They're getting more viewership. Uh, if it's not a sponsored video, I never share it on Facebook uh, because even if it does draw engagement, um, I gain no revenue from it. And so I am trying to make a living off of this. So I try and force people to go over to YouTube. But if, if it was paid, I would certainly be into it. <laughs> there, that sounded uh, very, yeah, well. <laughs> Do you 
Uh, so when I started, I did one a week. And then when I quit my job, I started doing two a week. Um, and sometimes it'll be three or four a week, but usually the only thing, the only thing I guarantee to my subscribers is every Wednesday. Uh, because I don't know if I'm going to get a press car or not. I typically always have one, and so every Sunday there's going to be a video for the foreseeable future, uh, but I don't guarantee it because subscribers uh, cling on to guarantees, and so you want to be careful in what you promise. Do you ever find that your job kind of got in the way of you creating videos at any point? Absolutely, yeah. Um, but what was cool about it is when I first started my engineering job, I didn't have a whole lot of tasks, and we had this little trick where HTTPS would allow you to sign into YouTube, uh, even though YouTube was blocked. So I did get to work at work on my own stuff and get paid twice. <laughs> Surprise, now they know. <laughs> Uh, I, I love the interaction, so I'm on it all the time. I have apps on my phone where I can comment. Um, I, I wake up in the morning and it's like something I can do literally from my bed and just be like, it's cold out, I'm just going to sit here and answer comments. Um, so I really enjoy the interaction. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing it. There are definitely mixed messages on what's you know, useful. There are certainly large channels which never communicate with their subscribers whatsoever. Um, I tend to be very open about, you know, whatever's going on. And I think people like that from an honesty point of view because, especially with sponsored content, like, oh, this is sponsored. And it's like, yeah, like it is. It's pretty awesome that Honda hooked up with me and we got to make this video about how adaptive cruise control works because I didn't know all the details and they shared it with me. And then it's like, oh, cool. It's like, all right. <laughs> So I find it useful, um, and I spend a lot of time doing it. I wouldn't say it's necessary. Yeah, I don't know how much time uh, you want me to. Take two more. Okay, we'll do two more. Um, have I already? Have you already asked I one? Already well, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to the back. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, well, my girlfriend's looking at moving to Africa. That kind of freaks me out. Um, <laughs> So hopefully we're back in the States in three years. Uh, I really like Portland, Oregon. That's where I live. And I, I honestly don't know where this is going to go. I feel like I don't have the uh, risk-taking ability and leadership capabilities uh, that that guy over there has. He's very good at managing a large group of people. I just kind of do my own thing in my head, and it seems to resonate well with my subscribers. Um, so I don't see the channel growing uh, people-wise. Maybe a video editor would be awesome, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know the answer to that question, unfortunately. I hope I get into some cool cars, though. Yeah, and last question. You uh, mentioned earlier that um, you know, Car Fossil actually has more followers than BMW and Audi yeah. on most It's absurd. Teams. You also mentioned the challenge of kind of reconciling paid content against you know, how, how you handle that. And, well, so here's the thing. Uh, part of it is the fact that people love third parties. Um, I and, and I've learned this through my car reviews. So I'll go to these press events and I'll sit in the car with an engineer or with a marketing guy uh, from Cadillac, let's say. So I was driving the Cadillac ATSV with a guy uh, from Cadillac. He knows <laughs> more about this car than I ever will in my entire life. So I thought this is really epic. I'm gonna put up my GoPro. We're gonna have a great interview about this conversation, or about the car. He's gonna tell me all about why it has a V6 and not an LS you know, engine, a V8, big block. Uh, and so I have this wonderful conversation with him. I think this is great. And then everyone's like, this is crap. This is marketing. This guy's just telling you, you know, stuff, the, the lines that he's learned. So people really respond well to a third party telling them things. So I can take the information that he said and literally just repeat it, and everyone's like, wow, this is great information, because it's me saying it, they trust me, uh, I'm a third party that they see as unbiased, and so because of that, uh, they're willing to listen. You have to make sure, I think, from a manufacturer standpoint, that your message isn't just a marketing statement. People love proof, that was one of my points, um, you know, prove it. And so if you can show visually proof of one of your claims about your car, if you can boil it down to a universal truth, People absolutely love it. Um, so I think showing real world tests is something that would resonate really well in the automotive world that isn't really done by manufacturers at this point. 
So like, there's all kinds of different all-wheel drive systems out there. If a manufacturer wants to take the time to compare themselves to others on a specific test that you can just watch with your own eyes and say, wow, the Audi made it up the hill and the Subaru didn't, that's crazy. And then you've learned, oh, this system is better in this situation. People love that and they'll resonate with it. But usually what you get is Audi has an awesome all-wheel drive system. And you're like, okay, you're Audi. Of course you would say that. So you haven't proved anything. So I think part of it is, is the proof to it. And thank you guys for your questions. I'm going to end it there. Uh, and thank you, Carthrottle, for having me talk.